My name is Paul Rousses Sabagina. This is my first message to all of you. After returning home from 939 days in hell, in a prison in Rwanda. First, I want to thank God, my wife, and my family. I would also like to thank each and everyone who supported me from the time I was kidnapped through my release. This includes the United States of America, the European Union, many other governments, the press, non-governmental organizations, human rights groups, my fellow Rwandans, and many, many friends and individuals who kept my story alive. In particular, I need to thank the U.S. government for stepping in and taking up my case. This is what made the difference. When the United States said, this cannot continue, Rwanda was forced to be realistic. Thank you for my life and my freedom. We are releasing this video on July 1st, which is the Rwandan Independence Day, the day my home country gained our freedom from colonization. Unfortunately, today, 61 years later, Rwandans are still not free. Rwandans are prisoners inside their own country. Throughout my whole life, I have advocated for the human rights of Rwandans and for democracy in the country of my birth. But Rwanda, is an authoritarian government that has no right for its citizens and that tolerates no dissent. The government has attempted to silence me through politics, surveillance and violence since the movie Hotel Rwanda came out in 2004. This became worse after November 9th, 2005, when I received the United States Presidential Medal of Freedom. And in August of 2020, they finally captured me. I was tortured, imprisoned, and faced false charges that had nothing to do with me. I did not participate in my trial because the end was a foregone conclusion. As expected, I was found guilty and sentenced to 25 years in one of the worst prisons in the world in hell. Paul Kagame and the Rwandan Patriotic Front, RPF regime in Rwanda, tried their best to silence me for good, as they do to all others who are critical of his government. What they actually did was to show the world their true color, nakedness, torture, forcefully imprison, kill, and set up shame trials for anyone who disagrees with them. I was only lucky that I wasn't killed, unlike many other people. My case made headlines around the world, but I am only one of thousands each year in this situation. I believe that every challenge you face in life can be a teacher if you are willing to learn. My experience during the 1994 genocide was one of the most important lessons I learned and it helped me survive being wrongfully imprisoned over the last two years and seven months. Prison can also be a school, too. You get out with a degree. First, I learned that whatever happens to us, we never die until our time comes. I believe that my life was spared so that I can tell my story to you. Second, I learned that a small group of people with the truth on their side have the power to change the world. I say to all the governments, 
that we can no longer follow business as usual. No one may take hostages across national borders with impunity. No one may, may violate the human rights of their people. And no one may intimidate and survey people across the world. The international community will take action to stop you. For almost 30 years ago, I wondered where the world was. Today, I ask the world again, where are you, you the world? You have stood idly by while this was happening to my country and massive suffering is the result. The situation in Rwanda is like apartheid in South Africa. The apartheid lasted for decades because the South African regime had powerful sponsors. But over time, their supporters realized that it was not worth the cost. Rwanda also has powerful sponsors, but now it is the time to realize that working with them is not worth the cost of innocent lives. Thank you again, one and all, for your help in bringing me home. Please continue with this mission of helping many other people, many other people in Rwanda and hell, in, and around the world who have no voice and who desperately need us. Thank you.